Well, I'm here this morning with Michael Francis of Rollingwood Property Management. Thank you so much for being here today. Good morning to you. It's a pleasure to be with you, as always. Yeah. Oh, well, thanks, Michael. Um, you are in an area of expertise that we have had a ton of questions about. We've got lots of members that have wanted to know about how to handle their own rental property. Some of them are managing someone else's property. So thank you for bringing this expertise to our conversation because I know it's needed in our market right now. Happy to help our brothers and sisters. Yeah. Well, I want to start... Um, just by talking a little bit about how are you talking with your owners right now? As, as a property manager, what resources or conversations are you having with your owners related to COVID-19? Well, we started out last month uh, with our statements that went out and began to prep them for what we thought might be coming, right? As, as we've talked about, we're all kind of making this up as we're going along. We're doing the best we can, trying to establish best practices. But some of that is reaching out to them to have them be prepared for that. Uh, for example, uh, we, we've talked about no rent increases. We've talked about potential lower rents. We've talked about days on market increasing, um, slow pays, no pays. Uh, we do property surveys before we do renewals. All those are on hold. Um, no, and we educate them about vacancy showing. So it's just about establishing those expectations early on of what that might look like to them as an interruption. Okay. And it, and it sounds like the guidance that you're giving, some of the conversations that you're having are not unlike what's happening in residential retail, where it's just how can you limit the number of interactions that you're having and yet still uphold the obligations that you have as a landlord and owner to your tenants that are in the property, right? Absolutely. So that morphs into that whole conversation of, if we're making adjustments to the rent, we still have to honor the lease agreement. We still have to honor property code, habitability issues. And as a property manager and a landlord, you have to figure out how to juggle that. You want to keep right. the tenant in the property. You want to accommodate them. You want to keep them safe. If you're a land property manager, you want to keep your staff safe. But on the same time, you also want to adhere to the lease agreement and make sure you're documenting everything that you do, get it in writing if you're making any deviations. Business yeah. as usual, just kind of pump the brakes a little bit and think it through and treat everybody the same. Sure. So what types of best practices are you putting in place that keep your staff, your clients, and your tenants all safe and even yourself safe as you're working through these issues? So a couple of things. Of course, we're all working remotely. Yeah. Right, absolutely. It's another no, day, another probably, Zoom, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. One more Zoom. And, and we're, we're all getting very, very good at this. Yeah. Uh, of course, no occupied showings, right? Those that's that started right away. We're walking vacancies three to four days after the residents move out. Uh, after the make ready crew finishes, we disinfect, mm -hmm. right? And then we disinfect right before the new tenants are moving in. Uh, doc, everything's done electronically. Of course, rent payments online, uh, and we also set some maintenance parameters for the tenants, right? We gave them some real and we started very early with them. Here's what we would service. Obviously, health and safety is a priority. But if you have just small maintenance requests, we're putting those on hold. Mm -hmm. And then we're also asking the questions. Is anybody quarantined? Anybody sick? You know, asking those questions to the tenants. If any of those are actual problems at the time, then we're saying, okay, if it's not a real crisis, but if it's something like broken locks, doors that don't work, uh, plumbing backups, things like that. Then we're going in under a controlled environment, working with our vendors to be sure we're also applying habitability standards and taking care of those tenants as well. It's a balancing act, especially if they're not paying the rent. Yeah. You still have to provide services. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, just from a humane perspective, it's appropriate to maintain the property in a way that keeps it safe and sound for everybody. Absolutely. Absolutely. Are you using any kind of standardized uh, forms or, or waivers when, when people are entering the property to release liability or, you know, we've seen forms in place for uh, property that's being shown on the resale side, but is there, are there any types of forms that may be new to your business as a part of this? Of course, the Texas Realtors put out some really great forms and we're using that, those forms. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, if we're making some deviations from the rent or some accommodations in that regard, again, thinking about the lease contract, that's a le if you're gonna change that, have an agreement, sign it, do a DocuSign. Uh, and they've also put out some great uh, 
owner information, tenant information forms, and we're including that information to the residents as well. And they're updating that. So we just recently got an update from them, uh, especially with the CARES Act, right? Mm -hmm. Again, like we were talking about with evictions, it's a, another ball game now trying to keep all that straight. So yes, we're giving them, and, and Texas Realtors has been great providing information to us. That's great. We'll uh, we'll be sure to link to that down in the in the descriptions for these interviews. Let me ask a little bit about how you're interacting with tenants on payment plans. You know, I think there's been confusion about when or where a landlord is required to create a payment plan. Is that a best practice right now? What 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 are landlords obligated to do, and what could they be doing, even if it's not an obligation? Well, as I understand it. <clears throat> There's no legal obligation to accommodate that request. However, best practices are being sure that you, again, if the tenant approaches you and says, hey, I've been inconvenienced or I've lost my job or whatever, have a set. We use a Google Doc and we send that link to them. Everybody fills it out. We get a certain amount of information from everybody and we come up with a plan based on that. We ask them for proof, right? They're not mandated to give it, but a majority of people <clears throat> are sincere and they're providing the right information. And based on that, then we are coming up because we had two goals when this started, keep our tenants and staff healthy and stabilize our income streams for our clients. So our goal is to keep the properties occupied, keep the tenants in there, reduce their stress and then accommodate their payments as best as we can. Uh, and, and, and again, 95% of the people have been great. And of the forms that Texas Realtors has provided, is one of those a template for payment plans or waiving late fees, or is each owner kind of managing through those uh, changes to the con to the lease independently? Well, I think it's twenty two twenty seven that provides that uh, clarity to the tenant about a payment setting up a payment plan. So whatever the terms are that you agree to, you can then put those into twenty two twenty seven and send that out, and it's that amends the lease document. So those all your documents line up. So 2227 is the one you need to use for that. Yeah, that's a great point too. So um, one of the things that we seem to have forgotten is that many of the standardized forms that we had in place before this are still applicable today. We just have to think about using them in a way that's conducive to the environment that we're in, yeah. as opposed to trying to create more and more and new and new. We just, we need to use the avenues that are available to us. Absolutely. Um, and so with, you know, in the event you're working with a tenant that maybe is, is not acting in good faith or you're having, you know, disagreements that are not going to be resolved, uh, we know that evictions are currently on pause. Um, how are landlords and property managers working through the inevitable experience of we're not, we're just not going to be able to resolve the issues that we have? And you'll have to excuse little Rue back here. I'm, I see you back. I'm most definitely working from home and my friend, she came in. <laughs> Uh, that's a great question. The first thing is it's been, uh, we weren't sure what we were going to see going into April in terms of delinquencies. We were thinking sure. anywhere from three, five, eight percent. And I'm excited to report those numbers are much lower than we thought they were going to be. <clears throat> and of those numbers, again, like I said, probably 99, 98 percent have been very cooperative. So it's a pretty small slice that we're getting some confusion over, right? Some are calling and saying, I thought I didn't have to pay my rent. Well, so taking time for them to understand, oh, okay. And so that's clearing up a lot of it. And yes, there are a few that are not communicating with us. Uh, and we're, again, being very methodical in our approach. And then posting, be sure you understand where your property is and what county you're in, what city mm -hmm. you're in, all those. And then posting a notice to their door that says, hey, we want to let you know. So we're not even doing any kind of eviction wording. It's just, we're not hearing from you. You are still obligated to pay the rent. We want to work with you. Please contact us and giving them a deadline, right? We need to hear fact back from you and then go into the next step. Yeah, and so I, you made two really good points there. One is uh, many of these rules are stipulated by the place where the property is. So yes. be it, you know, municipal changes, county level changes, and then federal and state level changes, there are layers to work through yes. when evaluating what options are available to you as an owner. Yes. Um, and, and so you need to be really methodical again and careful about evaluating what that criteria is. 
the second thing you're saying is that you need to continue to communicate and document that communication. Absolutely. You may Absolutely. not have the means to actually evict right now, and you may not want to do that, but you can continue to act in a manner that creates this paper trail of what the experience was between you so that as things resolve themselves, you've got that documentation in place. Yeah. So, yeah. Talking about the different rules, and yesterday I saw it or the day before that there's now some federal legislation that's being introduced to postpone evictions nationwide. So there continues to be changes every day in our property management and leasing world that people need to stay on top of to understand what the rules are. So I just saw Kyle's also now doing a 60-day moratorium. So that just okay. popped up on the radar. It's changing uh, very, very quickly, as it is for all of us. But in the property yeah. management world, it's even more so challenging. Yeah, it, there's a lot of complexity to that business already. And then to layer on all of these competing, you know, uh, le legislative issues is, is challenging for sure. Yes, absolutely. Um, what, to what extent can you talk to a tenant about their own health? Could you ask them about their recent travels or symptoms that they may be experiencing ahead of entering the property? What, what should you or can you be doing when you're thinking about entering the property yourself or sending a vent vendor partner in to make repair? Yes, absolutely. You should be doing that. And you should, again, you know, we're, we're venturing into healthcare issues. So what we've done right. as a team is to say, we're going to ask these questions. <clears throat> and then based on that, we, we might share and say, someone in this home, Right, so if it's a real emergency and we have to get a plumber in there, if water line's broken, someone in this home, so we're not being specific about that, but to not disclose that information to vendors that we're putting, especially our vendor teams, and we've been in communication with them about what we're doing and encouraging them to have best practices, screening the best we can, and, and asking those questions. So absolutely, you should be asking those questions. And our yeah. process policy is if we ask them and you don't reply, we're not coming. Yeah, yeah. So to the extent that um, you need to protect anonymity, just as HIPAA requires, but you can have the conversation and make the, the vendor partner aware of, of the existence of the virus potentially somewhere within the That's, property. So there's absolutely. a way to do that kind of at large. Yeah. Um, I know that we just spoke a minute and you said that, that Kyle now has a, a copycat legislation, but Talk to me a little bit about in the city of Austin, the new requirement to provide a 60 day notice prior to eviction. How does it work and what's required of us now? So it's a notice to give them time to cure is essentially how we're, we're thinking about that, right? We're not, okay. it's, not the, it's not the notice to vacate. It's, hey, here's a notice that letting you know that you're in default and you need to work with us to cure that. And we've got 60 days to do that. Okay, okay. So you're really... Process. It, it just, it gets back to that document, provide the paper trail related to what those interactions are between tenant and owner or tenant and manager, right? Yep. Yeah, and then that, again, that makes treat, a lot of sense. Treating everyone the same, having that process. And that, we're kind of using that wherever they are because we, best practices, we can't have 50 different rules. It's right. very difficult for staff. It's, it's confusing for the residents. Uh, and so we're just giving everybody an opportunity to cure. Right. So before we begin, you and I spoke just a little bit about, um, you know, the experience that some owners are having where, where the business of their, of their rental property is their business. It's their livelihood. And so you were talking about encouraging owners to speak with their mortgage lenders, you know, um, thinking about ways to kind of float this business for a period of time as they're having to have these conversations with tenants that can pay and those that cannot. Is there any other advice that you would give an owner just as they're thinking about their rental property as a business, not just the property that they own? Having them understand, and we all know this, there's risk in any investment. And I think sure. this drives home some of the points as a professional property management company that we've always been talking to our owners about having those reserves in place so that when these sort of hiccups come along, now some have done that and some have not done that. Uh, and, you know, trying to work, and some of them are very anxious at this time. Could I say? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. I think right. we all are. Right. Yes, right. Yeah. And that's fair. I mean, any business owner right now is concerned about their Absolutely. the impact to their revenues, the you know the impact to their operations. There's no difference to your point with that as it yeah. relates to those who are in the business of owning rental property. Yeah. 
And even though, let's just say they got their mortgage payment deferred, we still have to have operations that have their taxes and insurance to pay. And then even if the rent tenants are not making a payment, as we talked about earlier, we have to provide maintenance. Uh, air conditioning system goes down. The owners are going to have to send us money to go out and do those repairs. And so there's a lot of anxiety about all that. And again, it's high level of communication, not only with our tenants, but with our clients, yeah. keeping them posted. We just created a page on our website and we constantly direct them to that because everybody's inbox is just bloated right now. Yeah, yeah. And we just post information every day or two for them. Here's what we're working on. Just a reminder about these best practices. And and we track it and it's getting a lot of activity. So we know they're watching it. And those that aren't uh, reaching out to us directly, again, we're trying. And our clients have been good. Everybody mm -hmm. understands the brevity of this situation. Sure, sure. Well, Michael, thank you so much. I know that this will be beneficial for our members. We always appreciate hearing from you and appreciate you kind of breaking down these really complex times with us. So thank you Absolutely. for doing that. But just a quick shout out to the uh, uh, Teaching Academy and keeping uh, the classes going. We're oh, and we're on air. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I'm really excited about that. We're still doing the leasing and property management stuff. I'm excited that I'm sure there'll be a great enrollment in that. Uh, yeah. It'll be interesting Let's get to share all ready. that. And people can get more information about how to handle these issues. Yeah, absolutely. Check out the uh, additional classes coming out on abor.com. Yep. Of course, we'll be emailing about them. Thank you for the shout out as one of our Academy instructors. We appreciate that. Yep.